All right, good, good morning. Good morning, everyone. And once again, thank you for having me here. I'm extremely excited always, you know, to be here to, you know, share the word of God with us. And I would like to especially thank my sister, Pastor Emisi and Pastor Olumide Owolabi for this opportunity again. Wow. Yes, we are ready to take our stand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, let's just say, I know we've prayed, but let's just make a declaration of ourselves again. We do not cease to give thanks for ourselves, making mention of ourselves in my prayer this morning, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. As we go into this study, even through other sessions, the eyes of our understanding will continually be enlightened that we may know the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet for the benefit of the, benefit of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Amen. Father, thank you for what you did yesterday, for what you've done in every session of the Refuel. We give you praise for what is about to happen this morning. We thank you for tomorrow. We thank you for subsequent sessions. We thank you because it will be from glory to glory, grace to grace. In the name of Jesus, we will keep seeing your word. We keep seeing revelation through from your word. Our lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me here. Praise God. Taking your stand. And uh, we started yesterday. And the reason why um, it's important for us to understand this um, aspect of discussion is because everything Christ has done for us through redemption we, re we require us taking our stand because we have an adversary. <clears throat> we have an adversary who will try, you know, to dissuade us, to discourage us, to make us feel God is the enemy, to make us feel time is being wasted over, you know, serving God and waiting for answers to our prayers. So we must take our stand. And I said, you know, the knowledge of who we are, the knowledge of the blood covenant, you know, are several areas which we must be grounded. I said, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, from the time you believe, you receive. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Remember, it says that, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, I do a quick recap. Believe you receive, then you will have them. So that believing you receive till you have, this is believing you receive. This is have, all right? So you can see that there's a bit of, there was a bit of space from here to here. So between here, believing you receive and having, it can be a bit of time, it can take time. Sometimes a day, two days, one month, it could be years, all right? So between waiting from believing you I've received it and actually seeing it physically, it will require us taking our stand because while you go through the process of time, the devil will try to you know, mess with your mind, tell you the word of God is not true, see all your friends, see this, see that. But as we take our stand, you know, in understanding what God has done already for us, we will keep, you know, moving towards our desired result. Then the devil tries to stop God's plan and purposes for his children. So I mentioned seven areas. I said, understanding the blood covenant, understanding, you know, taking your stand in the covenant, taking your stand in the word of God, taking your stand in faith and your love walk, taking your stand in praises, celebrating your victory, even without seeing it. So between I believe I've received to I actually have it, you know, while taking your stand, one of the things you do is to consistently praise God. If you believe you've received, and if God has done those things you're trusting for God for, trusting him for, what, what is left? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Then we must take our stand in our words and actions. Our words and actions must align. What we say, you know, what we think influences what we say. What we say influences our actions. So we must be careful that what we say and what we do, they are aligned with what we have, what we believe we've received. All right. Then we must take our stand with regards to testifying. The testimony you share with others about that matter is very key. If your testimonies are full of doubt, fear, negativity, then we are not taking our stand as required. Okay, then of course we must take our stand fulfilling our purposes, assignment, and call. 
while you're waiting for certain things, the devil might tell you, I go, why don't we stop serving God? Why are you serving God? You've been waiting, you've been, you know, several things. But we must focus on other areas of our lives, other assignments, purposes, certain things God has called us to do. And we started yesterday by talking about taking our stand in the covenant. Like I said, I might not be able to finish through all, but I know that, you know, we are blessed already by one or two or three that we would, we would take. So like, going back to taking our stand in the covenant, praise God. We started by talking about trying to explain what the blood covenant is about, trying to explain that in the primitive era, the Jewish era and et cetera, they were very strong on covenant. They know they joke with covenant. I you know, I realize that sometimes we believers, our we must grow in our knowledge of the blood covenant. We must study about it. We must read about it. We must um, be inquisitive. We must, we must be hungry to know what has been wrought for us. You know, understanding of the covenant or we'll do certain things for you. It will let you know who you are, all right? When you understand the covenant, you will share with our Lord Jesus Christ, you will know who you are, you will know what is already yours. So you won't be begging. You won't be begging or pleading for what is already yours. It will influence your intimacy with God. You know, it will influence, understanding of the covenant influences your service to God and people. Giving and being a blessing would not be difficult, you know, for one who truly understands the blood covenant. And of course, persuasion of the goodness of God, you know, comes easily to us when we understand the blood covenant. So this morning, I'd just like to take us further, still trying to tidy up our talk about the blood covenant, taking our stand in the covenant, then we'll try and see if we can take one or two more. All right, so um, I would like to remind us that redemption brought us back, you know, with the Father, brought us back into fellowship, reconciled us, all right? Redemption made us saints we were sinners but through the redemptive work of christ we became saints all right now the blood of jesus was the would i say the tool or the substance or not or that perfected our redemption the blood of jesus um cleansed us purified us purged us you know of our sins purged our consciences you know from dead works and made us whole and perfect the blood of jesus brought us brought us redemption and brought us justification so we've been redeemed, we've been justified. That means we have right standing with God and it's all done by the blood of Jesus. Why? You see, the blood itself is, 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 is a spiritual tool. It's a, a spiritual currency. In the spirit world, now blood that is spent. Right here on the earth, we spend currency, we spend naira, we spend dollar. We, but when it comes to spiritual things, the blood is very key. Why? The life of a thing is inside the blood. The blood is, you see, hmm, have you ever wondered why we do blood transfusion? When people are very sick, they will drain out the blood and pumping blood and etc. So when we came into Christ, there was a blood transfusion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a blood transfusion. Now that we are in Christ, you know, the blood of Jesus brought us into that blood covenant. When we talk about blood covenant, when we talk about the covenant we have in our Lord Jesus Christ, it's actually the blood that sealed it up. The blood of Jesus is a seal you know, and it sealed up our relationship with God. You know, the blood was applied in two places, in heaven. Jesus went into the holies of holies to meet the Father with the blood, all right, that was shed for us here. Then, of course, the blood was poured over our consciences. That is why you don't have to suffer guilt over what you did 20 years ago. The blood has already been poured over our consciences and we've been delivered from, you know, sin and, 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 and guilt, shame, and etc. Now, the blood that purged us of our sins, didn't just purge us of our sins. Remember, sin was the foundation, all right? The consequences of sin is every negative thing we have seen or we are seeing, including sickness, diseases, oppression. They are all consequences of eternal death. They are all consequences of sin. So if the blood sorted out sin, it sorted out every other thing. The blood of Jesus didn't just sort out sin problem. He sorted out everything, gave us redemption, freedom, good health, wealth, prosperity. He brought us back in full relationship with the Father. But, you know, sometimes as believers, we are not sure. You know, I was just printing a picture in my head this morning. I, I was just imagining God, there's something happening on earth, and God just asked me, just makes an inquiry. Um, who is the person speaking? And they say, one so-so-so person. Is the person part of the covenant? Well, the person is a believer, but... The person is not even sure if he's part of the covenant because sometimes the person acts in covenant, sometimes the person acts out of covenant. We must be sure of the blood covenant we share with our Lord Jesus Christ. When we talk about blood covenant, blood, figure out what are you talking about? Relationship with the Father. Simply put, 
relation, people, those people that cut themselves and do love, um, blood covenant based on love and etc. What are they trying to say? That they will not leave each other forever. That they will love each other forever. The same thing. You see, when we talk about our relationship with God, um, the Bible says in First John, you know, paraphrasing that scripture. Let me quickly read it. Let me read that to us. Let's look at First John. Hallelujah. Our relationship is with the Father. First John verses, um, first John verse three. First John the third verse. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his son Jesus Christ. Our fellowship. So the covenant we are talking about, what really is it about? Relationship, fellowship with the Father, fellowshipping with the Father with the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, what makes it very important is because the way we treat the covenant, knowledge of the covenant, they help us act differently, you know, when we think about the covenant. And this morning, I want to show us some biblical stories, or let's just look at some biblical utterances from people who were sure mm -hmm. about the covenant. You know, the truth is that when we are sure of who we are and the covenant, this blood covenant, it will affect a lot of things. Let me mention a few things that will be, that will be, affected by our understanding of the blood covenant. Number one, the way you approach God will change. If you understand you are in relationship. Now, let me, when I talk about relationship, let me, let me make, let me still go further. You know, I don't want to ask us, but I know a lot of us have been in love. A lot of us are in love. As many as are married, you are in love. Um, for those who are waiting to be married, probably sometime in your life, you've met somebody that you loved so much. Now, let me ask us a question or let me just, you know, expand our imagination. When you love someone, what are the things you do? You call the person, you watch out for the person. If the person is in need, if you are really in love and it's pure love, original love, you wouldn't see the person in need and you just, you know, you know, avoid the person. You try to meet the person's need. If you want to, if you can help, you try to help. Now that is man. Then where did we as men, as human beings, human beings get that knowledge to love, to help, it was from God. So how much more God? The covenant we have with God has several benefits. And we entered into this covenant at new birth when we gave our lives to Christ. And so I said, the knowledge of the covenant will influence how you go to God. If you go to God, the Bible says we should come boldly, Hebrews 4, 6, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain favor and mess in the time of our needs. Paraphrase. You know, so the way we approach God, when we approach God, beg God, the Father, you know, you know, um, I'm a low, I'm a warm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm not worth being in your presence. We are worth being in his presence by what Christ has done for us. So we, we have to balance a lot of the things we say when we go into the presence of God. Because sometimes God gets a little bit worried that, ah, oh, after my son, don't die. You After the death of my dearly beloved son, these guys are still saying they are not worthy. They are not worthy. So the way we approach God and the things we say to God, yes. Ah, I don't, I also don't make those declarations because they didn't have redemption. They were servants. We are son. A lot of, you know, differences between us and them. So there are some Psalms I don't read. All right. There are some Psalms I don't read. There are some utterances I don't make. There are some songs I change or skip. Uh, amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. I am not a wretch. I am a son of God, redeemed. The blood of Jesus runs through my veins, you know, so that some of the things we balance when we get, begin to know this truth, the way we approach God, the way we pray, the way we talk, we, we you know, the knowledge of the covenant makes us supernaturally bold. You are supernaturally bold. It determines our success in life. How we succeed in life is really dependent on our knowledge of the covenant because we can ride on it. When you, have you noticed that those people in the world, those people that are involved in rituals and fetish and all those funny, funny, demonic, occultic, occultic things. Do you know they are always very bold? In fact, they are very troublesome sometimes because they know what they, are, what they have at the back. They look for trouble. They can come at you. They can do all sorts. Why? Knowledge of the demonic powers they have. And those are lesser powers. The greater one lives inside of us. The greater one is inside of us. We carry God inside of us. Remember the Holy Spirit we carry is not the smaller Holy Spirit. It was the same Holy Spirit in Genesis 1. It's the same third Godhead that we have inside of us. So I want us to know that the way we approach God, the way we pray, the way we talk, 
we, um, how bold we are and how much we succeed in life, amongst many other benefits, are the things that comes into place by our knowledge of the covenant. So let's just quickly look at a few scriptures. Let's look at a few scriptures that I love so much that has really blessed me. Let's look at Genesis 24. I want to show us some utterances and a few people that were conscious of the blood covenant, of the covenant they had. They, if you, the old, old, old Testament folks, they were very, very bold about who they were under the old covenant that had that didn't have as much promises as ours. So imagine we, if we become conscious, what and what will happen to us? Several beautiful things. Look at Genesis 24, 6. Genesis 24, verse 6. No, Abraham responded. Be careful ne never to take my son there. This was when Abraham was, you know, um, sending his servant to get a wife for Isaac. Genesis 24, 6. No, Abraham responded. Be careful never to take my son there. For the Lord, listen to this. I love this part so much. For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land, solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angels ahead of you and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. If she's unwilling to come back with you, then you are free from this oath of mine. But under no circumstances should you take my son there. Can you see that bold utterance? That the God that brought me from my father's land, he will send his angel ahead of you. Immediately, Abraham said that action, you know, our words influence what happens under the covenant. We activate the blood covenant by faith and our spoken words. Two major things. Please take note of that. To activate the blood covenant over you, you must have faith in the blood of Jesus, have faith in the blood of, of, of the covenant, have faith in the blood of Jesus and the covenant, then the words you speak. These guys, they spoke some things there. You will wonder. Let's look at another scripture. Have you ever wondered in 1 Samuel, now let's jump to 1 Samuel 17. The story of David and Goliath. We know all this. I'm just reminding us. 1 Samuel 17, verse, we're going to verse 34. We're going to read verses 34 to, I think, 37. 1 Samuel 17. I'm starting from verse 34 now. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If an animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. Can you see that? These are covenant people. I have done this to the lions and bears, and I will do this, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claw of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Covenant. Those were covenant bold utterances. Beautiful. How can a, a, a David be comparing a great champion from the Philistine to lions and um, what else? Lions and bears. He was based on the covenant. Remember I said he has defiled the army of the living God. That's beautiful. And if you go further to, to verse 45, David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's army, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Today, the Lord will conquer you. Can you see that? The Lord will conquer you. All right? The, the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a living God in Israel. And everyone assembled there will know, and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and it will give you to us. Can you see that boldness? The understanding of the covenant will give you boldness. I, you know, I strongly believe that when David was leaving home, as instructed by his father, to take food or some items to his brothers on the war front, he probably didn't know, except it was revealed to him. He probably may, may not have known that he would meet with Goliath. So he didn't have time to go and pray. You see, when you stand in the covenant, you don't need to, you are just, you are spontaneous in faith. You are spontaneous in your words. They wake you like this, you speak covenant. You are sleeping and you just open one eye, you are speaking covenant. You don't need to go and say, let me go and fast for 20 days. Let me fast for, it's a permanent posture. Staying, standing your ground in the covenant is a permanent daily posture. You just take your stand. Can you see what David said? He didn't need to go back and say, can we do dry fast for 
No, don't get me wrong. It's okay to have time to fast and pray and etc. But I'm saying the covenant posture is a permanent one. It's a deliberate one. It's a conscious one. You just know you're in the covenant. Hallelujah. Let's look at another scripture. I love this one as well. Um, um, Joshua 10. My dear family, have you ever wondered, Joshua 10, when the Bible says in, verses, in verse 12, verses 12 to 13, verse, verse 12 now, on that day, the Lord gave the Amorites over to, to Israel, all right? Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel. Now, wait, Joshua said to the Lord, in, not in Cornell, in the presence of Israel, sun stand still over Gibeon and you moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. That's a covenant-minded somebody. <laughs> let me put it that way. He didn't say it in the corner that, let me, I'm not sure if it will work. He was so sure that whatever he makes, a when he makes a demand, Joshua was sure that, uh, let me make a demand on our covenant partner. Remember when we talk about the blood covenant, we're talking about the highest human, God is not human actually, the highest individual personality in the entire universe, the king of kings, that is the one we are in covenant with. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So the sun and the moon stood still. You see, it's, it's against the covenant term for, for one person not to help the other. So if you need God's help, he's going to show up. He would show up. He's part of the, your covenant right. Hallelujah. So the sun and the, and the moon stood still. Praise God. Let's look at another scripture. Let's look at um, Genesis 41. Genesis, I'm just, I'm just reading different stories and areas where people made demand on the covenant and they got results. If they got results, we will get results. If they got results, we will get results in our lives. Look at um, Genesis 41, 16. Um, let me start from 15. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, but no one can interpret it. But I have heard that I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it. Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Can you see that? He didn't need to go and consult God in the corner that God, Biko, will you help me? I, I know I cannot do it though. He said it boldly affirming God, affirming the covenant. That I cannot do it on my own, no, but God will give you the answer. This reminds me also of the story of um, Daniel chapter two, when the king had a dream too. Another beautiful story. The king had a dream, wanted somebody to interpret it. Nobody could interpret it. They were about to kill all the astrologers and everyone. Then they, um, Daniel got to know and if you look at um, Daniel 2, verses 14 to 16, when Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handed, handled the situation with wisdom. Yes, that was Genesis 41, 16. Now, I mean, Daniel chapter 2, from verses 14 to 16 now. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, De Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. He asked Ariok, why has the king issued a harsh decree? So Ariok told him all that had happened. Daniel went at once. Please take note of that word, at once. He didn't go and go back to the... Daniel went because they were about to kill people. Daniel went at once. So your covering can cover other people. The other astrologers and all those guys were spared because of Daniel's bold, tenacious you know, step. Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time to tell the king that, to tell the king what the dream meant. You know, imagine it. He went to the king, king, and um, maybe he said, I'm just trying to imagine. Please give me till tomorrow or give me till evening. I'm going to tell you the dream. I I'll come back with the, with the solution to the dream. That's beautiful. And the Bible goes on to say that he went on, told his friend, and they went to God. He urged them to ask the verses, verse 18. He ought them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so that they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. 19 says that night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and etc. and etc. Covenant mentality, being bold with regards who we are and what we carry will affect our careers, will affect our lives, will affect our health, will affect results. Now, is one thing to know about the covenant, 
is another thing to find where it is written in the word. And I'm going to the next part, which is taking your stand in the word. You see, where, where, where do you find all these nuggets and truths about the covenant? It's God's word. It's maybe the word should have even come before the covenant. Or maybe it's, maybe it's the other way. But the word of God, the word of God is through the word you know what you have. It's through the word you know what is available to you through redemption. It's through the word you can say, ah, and God has said I will not be sick. God has said that Jesus Christ has delivered me from every oppression. It is through the word that you can take a firm stand on the covenant, in the covenant. If you don't know what is written about the matter, you can't win in that matter. Holy Shelley, if you can't win, the, you, it will be a lot of struggle. So the word and the covenant, the blood, they all work together. Hallelujah. Praise God. And back in those days, they didn't even have a compilation of scriptures like we have. They don't have this, which we have. We have a beautiful compilation. We have the word of God put together. We must make effort. You know that officials won't say that the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened. You know, for me, remind, remembering my story, for years I was under oppression. I was a church worker. I was this. I was active. You know, activity is the same as revelation knowledge. You can be active and empty. God forbid we don't have anybody that will be that way now, miss, in Jesus' name. One can be active and void of revelation knowledge. One can be very active and still don't know or still isn't clear about who he or she is in the Lord. That was my story. I was everywhere in church. I was doing everything. In fact, years after, when people started reading the wild waiting story, they were calling me. Ah, Afikayo, so you were going through this when we were at Four Square. So you were going through this and you didn't tell everyone. I was, it was packaging, packaging, packaging. But we don't have to package because we have the truth. And the Holy Spirit is available to unveil the word to us. But guess what? We need to labor. We need to make out time. We need to be decisive about studying the word. Without studying the word, you can never be grounded in your covenant. You can never be clear about your covenant right. It's in the word, like the book of Hebrews talks about the covenant. It's one, it's the book of the covenant. The book, book of Hebrews, book of the covenant. If you go to Leviticus, you will see blood, 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 how rituals, how, when I say rituals, how sacrifices, peace offering, um, guilt offering, all those things. It is through the word of God we come abreast with who we are and what is available to us. So if we are not standing on the word, we can't take our stand to receive miracles. Has the Lord promised you anything? Are you trusting God for anything? You need to go into the scriptures and search out scriptures that confirms that you have that thing. You are trusting God for, for, for a new job. What about um, Psalm 90, 17? It says, let the beauty, favor, and delightfulness of the Lord rest upon the works of our hands. Um, confirm the works, or establish and confirm the works of our hands. Yea, confirm the works of our hands. Paraphrase. So, you know, I'm trying to say that, you see, the scripture is everything. The word of God is is, is, the, is, the, is the word of God, the written word of God is the spoken word of God. It is God speaking to us. So if we are trusting God for anything and we're not taking our stand in the word, it's going to take a lot of effort. Now, the word of God will impact your knowledge of the covenant and it will also influence your faith. I'm going to the third one. Ability to take our stand in faith. You see, hmm, crying won't bring the miracles. Complaining, gumbling, gumbling and asking God, you promised this, it's already October, we're going into November, what is happening? It won't, it won't bring it. What moves the hand of God is faith and not just hope. Hope is good, but we don't build on hope. Hope is the foundation, faith is the building. Sometimes we stay in hope. You know, I was also that way. I was in hope for a long time. I was thinking I was acting in faith until I started growing in the knowledge of, you know, of, of God. And I started growing in faith. I realized, yeah, I've been acting. I've been, I've been in faith much more than hope. Things don't happen when you are in hope. Hope keeps you going. Hope gives, gives you the energy to, you know, to build your faith. But you won't get miracles just hoping, you know. And your utterances will show if you are hoping or you are really having faith. Mm, I, I know it will happen one day. That's hope. mm, -mm. I know it will happen one day. I know that God will hear me. I know that someday this situation will clear off. I know that, I know that I, you know, when you have faith, it is done. Oh, I'm the victorious one. I have this miracle. I am the one winning. Our utterances will show if we're standing in faith, if we're standing on, if we're just hoping, or we are walking in doubt and unbelief. Now, for us to clear off doubt, unbelief, and move from hope to standing in faith, the word of God, the knowledge of the covenant. And you know, faith cannot work without love. You've got to work in love. You know, I love the way the Amplified Bible, you know, if you look at um, Mark 11, 
Mark 11, the way it says it, I love it, love it, love it, love it. It talks about you asking and believing and that you receive, you receive. But it now ends by telling us that, hey, if you have, if you are, if you are holding anybody in unforgiveness, let me quickly read it. I'm using the Amplified Version, Mark 11, 23. I assure you, I most solemnly say to you, what whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart in God's unlimited power, but believe that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him in accordance with God's will. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance to God's will, be confident. Okay, that is, in accordance to God's will, believe that you have received them and it will be given to you. Look at 25. Whenever you stand praying, that's Mark 11, 25 now, the amplified version. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, drop the issue, let it go. Please just type it in the, in the chat room for me if you don't mind. What are we to do? Forgive, drop the issue, let it go. It's so beautiful to see verse, verse 25 after 24. After 23 has told us you can speak to the mountain, tell it to move, it will move. 24 says if you believe you receive and you don't doubt, you will have it. Then 25 now says if you stand praying, you know, that means all the things you are, the mountain you are speaking, you need speaking to all the things you are believing to receive. If you stand praying and you are holding everybody in unforgiveness and you don't forgive, ah, just forgive, forgive him, drop the issue, let it go. Drop the issue, let it go. So that your father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions and wrongdoings, you know, against him and others. But if you do not forgive, 26 is where I'm going to. If you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your transgressions. So we can see that forgiveness and walking in law will determine if Mark 11, 23 and 24 will come to pass. So faith and love works together. Just the way Pastor Dami really explained it to us. It's so crucial for us to walk in love. A lot of time when things are not, um, um, are not um, aligning, you can go and check. Am I holding any? I do that. There was a time I did a forgiveness check. I just thought I should just check. Am I holding anybody? It's a sincere therapy. Beautiful. You yourself and yourself. You just do it. And I took my pen and I started writing. And I was shocked that I was holding some people, you know, in, um, I, let me say semi-forgiveness. I thought I'd forgiven until I started thinking about it again. And I was still feeling the hurt and the pain, you know, and I started checking. Have I really forgiven? And I realized that the forgiving remains, forgiveness was a beat to be complete. And immediately I completed it. Immediately I completed it. And let me also say this. Unforgiveness is very, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's an opener. It will open the doors to the devil. It will open the doors to the devil. You know, a lot of people sometimes ask me that um, after my self-deliverance journey, how has things been? The truth is this. It's the truth is the one. He, the Lord, has set free is free indeed. But we can open the door through unforgiveness. I remember there was a time. I think I've shared this story in a couple of meetings that there was a time I was, um, somebody did something and I was processing. I wasn't planning to hold the person in unforgiveness. Actually, in my heart of heart, I'd forgiven, but I was now thinking about it. I'm going to call the person and have a discussion. And I will say this, I will say that. I was planning and planning for five days. Then on the fifth day, I, I, I woke up to pray and I went back to bed. As I was about, as about to lie, as I was about to lie, lie down, I don't see demons. I don't see evil spirits. I don't, we don't have encounters, no. That one is not possible. Now, that's the knowledge of the covenant that we, we share as well. Angels encamp around us, all right? So we mustn't go to bed planning to see evil or planning to have a bad dream. You will have what you say or what you think. Remember, God is able to do abundantly above what we can think, ask, or imagine. So our imaginations are also very important. But that day, I realized something. As I was about to go back to bed to sleep, remember, I'd, I thought I'd forgiven the person, but I was meditating and practicing. I would tell the person, then sometimes I was like, ha. Ah, how can this person do this to me? How can this happen? Wow, wow. That is still part of, remember the Bible says, drop it, let it go. You have to drop it, boom, and let it go. I really hadn't dropped it. I was still holding on and making plans, all right? So I went to bed as I was about to lie down. I sensed an evil presence. I sensed an unclean environment. And I was wondering, what in my house? How come? You know, there's some things you, you, you shouldn't expect. If they happen, you must check. Something is wrong. So immediately I knew something was wrong. I knew I'd probably opened the door unconsciously. So while I was trying to, I, I, just, I wasn't asleep yet. I was still trying to understand that what is this presence I'm feeling? Immediately I fell into like a dream or trance. I don't even know what to call it. And I saw 
to my shock, to my surprise, I saw a demon standing by my head. <laughs> Those are one of the times that I've unconsciously opened the door. By the time I got out of that encounter, I forgive the person. I forgave the person immediately. I forgave the person and I forgave everybody in advance, arrears. You know, nothing is worth taking our peace. Nothing is worth taking the joy, the peace we have with our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing was, you know, you, you should know when you open the door. So I knew before I woke up that I'd opened the door because naturally, you know, bad dreams. And we, we shouldn't expect bad dreams. We shouldn't expect demonic attack. Why? We've been delivered. We've been translated. We are seated far above principalities and powers. They are underneath us. So they have no dealings with us. We have no dealings with them. We cast them off. We resist them and we move. You know, so I'm just trying to say that faith and love goes together. So we've talked about covenant. We've talked about faith. We've talked about love. And we've talked about the word of God. Yes, well, that's my, but some people, it can take some time for some people to forget. All right. However, drop it, let it go. Keep asking the Holy Spirit for help. Because trust me, trust me, all forgiveness can open the door to so many things. Sickness, diseases, affliction, oppression. So a lot of time when I'm in counseling sessions and people, and I'm listening to people, I begin to ask them, can we check your love work? Can we check your forgiveness journey? And sometimes I'm right. By the time they come back, they share with me, oh, I thought that this, and once we clear it up, no, the road is clear. A lot of oppression and demonic attacks are actually not the devil are actually not the devil. Some of it works of flesh. Some of it, the door has been opened. Some of it, you know, ignorance is there. I understand. But mo not all of it is the devil. So sometimes we blame the light. It all happened to me. It wasn't the devil. I knew. Moi, I knew that I opened the door through that delayed forgiveness. So delayed forgiveness is unforgiveness. If you are planning to forgive tomorrow, it's still unforgiveness. If you are planning to forgive two hours time, remember where to drop it and let it go. Let's talk about praises. Taking your stand in praises. Ah, that one is a very tough one. And I've seen myself, you know, have to rise up. You see, you won't feel like, you won't feel like, you won't feel like. But really, if God has done what you're trusting him for, remember we started from saying, you believe you received and you receive. If you really believe you've received the miracle you're trusting God for, then you should praise him. You see, praising God is not a feeling, it's a choice. You won't feel like, but it's one of the most, most powerful tools of victory. And it's available to us. So if you want to feel like praising God, you won't feel like. Sometimes I have a friend. While I was in Bible school, I met one sister who received, a, a, you know, something very precious to me through praises. So she started teaching me. Her name is Norua. I would always remember her for as long as I live. She started teaching. I used to feel, I know about praises, though. I know about praises until I got close to Norua. Because she would tell me, Fikayo, let's come together and be doing, let's, let's have praise sessions. I like praise sessions. Me. I know about praises. I've been praising God. I praise God. But her own dimension was really different. So one day, it just occurred to me that I had, I had, a, 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 I was inspired to allow her take me through the journey. Then we started praising God. We did almost 100 days together. I can't realize, say, I know Sabi anything about praises God. Praising God. Praises, they are so powerful. It will lift the depression. It will lift, lift worry. It will lift anxiety. Oh, wow. Wow. Sometimes we, I don't feel like, in fact, the first one month when I started doing my prayer session with this beautiful woman of God, I will be grumbling. She's the one who is standing with me regarding the matter. I will be wondering that we are spending too long. Ago, you know, and we just sing regular beautiful songs. But I started, as I started tuning my heart, I started seeing the power in praises. Number one, it gives you confidence. It ignites your faith. So when you are taking your stand, you must learn to praise God. You must learn to praise God. Don't wait to see, become, become. So sometimes when I'm praising, I might pray, start praising in flesh. I'll start praising. I might not really be into it. In a few minutes, I started, I, I, my speech start getting in tune. Before you know it, you are lost in praises. There are some times I'm, I'm lost in praises. And, you know, from there, I will have, there will be supernatural utterances. There will be instructions. Hallelujah. I've realized that when we are praising and worshiping God, not that different kinds of prayers. There are nine kinds of prayer. Prayer of intercession, prayer of faith, prayer of supplication. There's also the prayer of praise and worship. It's a prayer on its own. You can just come. I know God inhabits the praises of his people. The more we praise while we are trusting God for those miracles, the more we are taking our stand. The more we are saying we are not moving. I thank you, Father. So what I also learn to do is to pick scriptures and praise God. Dance over scriptures. Dance over the promises of God I'm standing on. Oh, 
you're trusting God for marriage. The Bible says he that finds the wife finds a good thing. Just pick that scripture and begin to thank God. You thank God, you will dance. You know, there are different kind of um, um there are different methods and ways to dance. There is a dance of the spirit. You are inspired by the spirit. You are not cajoled to dance. It comes from your spirit to praise God. And the more we practice praising God, when we make praise and worship a lifestyle, we see more miracles. Let me also share. You see, most of the encounters, you see, um, then, you know, the more we praise and worship God and spend time in this supernatural endeavor, we begin to grow in spiritual things as well. We begin to grow. I realize that the times I've spent worshiping and praising God, I've seen more, I've heard more. I've seen not just for myself, but for even for others. So for me, I enjoy and I spend a lot of time. I love to I cultivate the habit of praising and worshiping God. Remember Acts 13, while they were worshiping and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, and it's true, I'm a testimony that when we spend time worshiping, praising, the Holy Spirit will say, instructions will come. I've shared a few um, um, testimonies. Let me share one or two. June, um, July 15, 2022 was the first time I spent a long time. I started practicing praising and worshiping God extensively. You know, you know that um, sometimes, you know, you can just shut down and say today, I just want to honor God. I just want to praise God over that matter. I just want to worship God over that matter. So after some time, or after praising God for some time, a name just dropped in my heart. So things will drop, answers will drop, solution will drop, a name dropped in my heart. And I just picked up my phone and I called the person. The, the husband was in Canada then. The wife was, you know, the husband, the wife was in Canada. The husband was here. I just called randomly as something was inspired in my heart about the couple. I called. I spoke to the husband. And the husband was shared with me. Oh, we're Africa, we're trusting God. Um, we've put in our application. I need to go and meet your friend, though. Your friend's 40 in so 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 in so 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 number of days. I know because I spent time with God, I was charged off. I said, let's do a prayer of agreement. You can make it. It was like 10 days time. It was crazy. You can make it. It was like, no, are you sure that it's, 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 let's do it. When I had the prayer of agreement with him, I sensed that my my friend's husband, uh, it was quite a lot, you know, in 10 days, I just put up the phone. I, I put the call through to my friend and I told her, you know, so your, your covenant will affect other people positively. I just told her, let's pray. Let's agree. And, you know, Crazy Holy Ghost girl like me. We agreed, and to the glory of God, in 10 days, the husband left. I can begin to share several testimonies, testimonies that have happened by just spending time praising God. Not just for only the things you need, but I'm always talking talking about making it a lifestyle. Apart from asking, give me, give me, give me, you can just make it a lifetime of praising and worshiping God. Then taking your stand in words and action. Your words must align with your action. You must act what you say based on what you believe. If people put a call through to you regarding what you believe and your words are negative, you have negated your prayer. So sometimes we are unconsciously negating and canceling the prayers through the words we speak and our actions. Now, if you speak right and you don't act right, you're still negating it. But what you do is to be conscious of what you say. And how do you stay conscious? Keep the word of God at heart. Keep meditating on the word. That promise that you have, that one scripture or two scriptures you're standing on, say it over and over to yourself. Let it become part of you. You see, what happens is this. For us to get results, our faith is required. Faith is what gives the result. Sometimes, most of the things we are trusting God for, our faith has not fully grown to pull the power of God and have an action and have the power of God act and push the miracle to us. Our faith is what reaches out and take hold of the power of God to deliver miracles. So sometimes we are still on that faith process. So your words and action may be disaligned, but we must keep studying, keep working, keep staying conscious to ensure that our words and our actions align. Because if you are praying and you are saying negative things, it won't work. It won't work. It won't work. So our words and our actions must align. We must take our stand. Africa, what's happening? Oh, all is well. All is well. You will, I try not to speak what I don't believe, I watch what I say. Sometimes, um, like I, I mean, I'm, I'm at the clinic and the, hospital, the doctor says something, something, something. I won't affirm it and I won't be rude. You know, some people that will fight doctor. I rebuke you, doctor, in Jesus' name. You don't have to say all those things. You don't have to fight medical experts. They are, they are working. They are doing their job. So what I do is I take my own stand. I don't affirm. 
but I, I speak what I want, right? I still speak. I find a way of still speaking the truth over the situation. So what I'm trying to say is that your daily, your, your daily utterances must carry faith, must carry the word. What you don't want to see, don't ever say it. Don't ever say it. You see, any unspoken word dies unspoken. But once you give power to your words, because remember Mark eleven twenty three, 23, you will have what you say. If you read Mark eleven twenty three, 23, the word say was mentioned four times. You will say to the mountain. And if you believe that what he says, without doubt, I'm just paraphrasing, we'll have what he say. Say, 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 say. So what we say is too important. Don't say what you don't want to see. Don't say what you, it's, I said it's in error. There is no error in the things of the spirit. Don't say it and, you know, you want to go and take it back. No, no. Keep saying only, even when you're under pressure, on, even when you're under pressure, even when you have people that are older than you, you don't have to be rude to people. You don't have to fight people, but there's a way you keep projecting what you want to say, what you want to see by what you say. And of course, your actions must align. Don't forget your testimony. Take your stand in your testimony regarding the matter you're trusting God for. When people call you, if you carry your how far it is done, oh, it is done. I try to testify of the goodness of God, even over that matter. Why? The covenant, the word of God, my faith is take, helping me to take my stand. So while testifying to others, keep speaking what you want to see and not the situation. Now, let me say this, when you are taking your stand, the, sec the situation might not change immediately. It might be as if everything you're doing is looking con is, is almost contrary to what you're praying. Don't be moved. Remember, looking not at the things that are seen, but the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are of eternal value. Sometimes when you are speaking to the mountain, the mountain doesn't crack from outside. It begins to crack from inside. You will almost, you that are hitting the mountain, you will feel nothing is cracking. Something is cracking, my dear brothers and sisters. If you are applying the word, it is cracking. If you are applying the word, it is working. It doesn't matter how long you apply. Do you know what happens to us? We get tired. I've been speaking over this situation, so I'm tired. I want to encourage you, keep speaking. You know, don't get tired of speaking. Remember what I said yesterday? Let me use the word again. We must pepper the devil. We are the greater ones. We have the greater one living inside of us. We don't budge for the devil. He, bought, he will move for us. He will move for us. But you know, the devil knows that believers, when you push them so they will get tired. The devil sometimes just, I, I just imagine sometimes he's winking. Uh, believers, leave them. let them confess for two months. After the third one, they will get tired of confessing. And that happens actually sometimes. But we receive grace daily. That's why the Pauline scriptures are very important. Ephesians 1, 16 to 23. Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. That 14 to 21, I love it very much. He said that I may be strengthened with might through your spirit in my inner man. I love to declare that scripture every day. Because all these things we are talking about is not by might. It's not by power. It's by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. For you to take your stand in the covenant, for you to stand on the word of God, for you to stand in faith, when you are not seeing the result, it takes the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But if we will stand and not budge, if we will stand and not move, knowing that God has said it, has he said it, he will do it. You see, the integrity of God is intact. He's always with the believers. The integrity of God is intact. God doesn't change his mind. He doesn't say blue when it is red because he's the creator. The devil is just a creation. He was created. God is the creator of all things. He can change, he can do. But God doesn't check things by timing, by months. This, my daughter has been waiting for one month, two months, three years, four years. There are other things that are being considered. One of it is our faith. Uh, it's in our hands. We determine how fast our manifestation can come. That is the truth. When we are walking in faith, we are the ones that determine how speedy, how fast those miracles will come to us. If you want your miracles to come faster, then walk more on these things. No, not don't do walks, but trust the Holy Spirit to help you. And finally, make sure that you take your stand in fulfilling your purpose, assignment, and call. What has God called you to do? What has God called you to do? What is the assignment, the instructions? While you are taking your stand, waiting for manifestations, keep doing it. Keep pushing out the word. Keep doing those things. It could be, you could be in the in the five to the, 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 it could be in the work place, it could be in ministry, it could be in the fashion industry, it could be in the entertainment industry. Keep giving glory to God through your life, keep fulfilling those things because the devil is very good at saying, ah, God has not he has not done all the things you're trusting him for. So why why bother? We must bother. It's part of taking our stand that I trust God.
I will do what God has said while I trust him to fulfill other aspects of my life. I want us to just lift up our voices and begin to receive grace and just decree grace. We just declare grace over ourselves. Just pray for grace. Even as we close, get to the close of the year, as we begin to wrap up this year, we receive grace to run. We receive grace to move. I declare, I declare acceleration in the name of Jesus. We have two months plus, right? For some of us, for a lot of us, for all of us, we will still meet those deadlines. We will still have those testimonies in the name of Jesus. There is speed available. Remember, the Bible says that God strengthened Elijah. He was supernaturally strengthened. He was able to run. There is supernatural speed. It doesn't matter where we are at, you know, this month. This is the 17th day of October. It doesn't matter. One day before the Lord. Remember, it's like a thousand years. One day, one day, one day. You know, and what I do you know what I love about uh, the, the, the covenant of God. Remember the four leapers that were saying, if we stay here, we die. If we go, we die. Oh, let us just go to the camp of the enemies. And the Bible said, the Lord hastened. And that book is in, that scripture is, is in the second Kings or first Kings. Somebody can help me put it down. The Bible said, the Lord amplified the feet of the leapers and the enemies at the camp had, 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 had the feet and were scared. I said, ah, and they ran away and they fled in, in short, summarizing that scripture. What I'm trying to say is once you take your place in the, that's covenant. Those guys were leapers, but they knew who they were in the covenant. They took their place. They went into the enemy's camp. For some of us, we've got to take the bold step, bold risk of faith. Or let me just say, these steps of faith. God has called you to do some things. You've not done it since January. You can still do it. You can still take that leap of faith. You can step into those things God has told you to do in the name of Jesus. And we will receive help. Help has come. Help. For as many of us that are desiring help, the Lord will send help. The Lord has sent help. As we listen and fellowship with him, he will be dropping instruction, nuggets, people that are meant to help us. The, our steps will be ordered in the name of Jesus. Our steps will be ordered. In many few days to the end of this year, in the name of Jesus, our steps are ordered. In the name of Jesus, we stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. We stand perfect and, and complete in all the will of God. Yes, thank you so much, Sister Joyce. That's it. This scripture, we should all look at it. Second Kings 7, beautiful. Those guys, they were leapers. They took both. If we stay, we die. If we go, we die. Just let's go. We will not die, but I'm saying let's go, guys. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's take those bulls by the horn. Let's take our covenant position in well. Let's take our posture well. Let's tell the devil to get his hands off our lives and families. Let's tell the devil no more. Stop your maneuvers in the name of Jesus. Let's command the blessings by the words of our mouth, by our faith and our love walk. Let's Take our stand in the covenant. We are sons. We are not even servants. So the old covenant, they were servants. We are sons. That Jesus, the Bible calls us joint heirs. We are co-heirs. We were once alienated, but we've now we've been moved close to the Father. We can call him Habba Father. He says, come boldly. He was the one that gave us the invitation. Come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy in the time of need. I want us to rise up in the next few days we have left to the end of the year and take what is rightfully ours. Stop thinking of death. Stop thinking of death. Think of death cancellation. Instead of death, think of life. Instead of being broke and financially handicapped, think of blessings. Just thinking of it draws it. You see, you ignite the covenant through your thoughts, through your thoughts and spoken words and faith. Just believe in it, it will happen. Just believe in it. Can I make you guys laugh as I begin to wrap up? In fact, inanimate objects must respond to the covenant power we carry. Yes, yeah, so one day I was at home, one of my gadgets stopped working. I, I, my dear family, I was just thinking of it. I said, everything works because I'm in covenant. Everything works. Nothing fails. Even this guy that you've got to work. The thing just picked up. It must pick up. It must, must pick up. It must pick up. Everything must answer to it. There's nothing dead. Is any deadness in God? No. Remember, we are in covenant with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The highest covenant. Who created covenants? God. We are now in blood covenant, established with better promises. We must make use of what we have. We must stop being beggarly. Stop being fearful. We must be bold. We must be bold. We must be bold. You must be bold. You must be bold. Only those who are tenacious, who are audacious, we see the workings of the covenant. If you are too timid, will it work? Look at what Joseph said. Look at what Daniel said. I'm coming or I'll get to the meaning of your dream. Joseph said, I can't do it, but I have a God. 
What was it? What, what, if he was too scared that God would do it, he would never have uttered that word. We must be bold. One man told the sun and the moon to stop because of the covenant. We must do the same because Jesus said, greater what will we do? Greater what will we do? It's time to cut off timidity and begin to take our place in the covenant. Stand up and take your place. Speak to that child. You cannot be sick. Speak to that child. You are intelligent. You begin to walk well in school. Speak to our lives. Speak to our finances. Speak to our health. That is taking our stand in the covenant. We must take our stand. If not, the devil will take it for us. And that's not his portion. That is not allowed. The devil can take what is ours. Father, we just give you thanks. We give you praise. There will be signs and miracles. Amos 9.13 for someone. Things are going to happen so fast. Our head will swell. Can somebody drop that scripture, the message translation? Amos 9.13 is what I'm living with us. Things are going to happen so fast. Our head will swell. One thing on the heel of the other. And everywhere we look, it's going to be blessing. Blessing like wine dropping off the mountain. Oh, some people are coming into the 13th hour miracle already. We have 12 months, Abby. We have the 12 months. Well, every year, I know companies will give this 13th, 13th, 13th month bonus, right? We are collecting our own from this October. It's already happening, my dear family. Your own bonus, our bonuses have started. Compensation, thank you so much. Thank you so much for dropping it. Yes, compensation will benefit. Compensation, the Lord will reward, he will compensate and even give benefits. He will give Jara. If companies can give 13th month, how much more God? Hallelujah. The year is ending when for us and nobody's dying. No. Nobody's dying. We are living to declare the glories of God. Thank you, Father, for this morning and for every session that will still happen after now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and we have heard the word. Amen. Thank you for having me. God bless you. I took past my time and I apologize. Thank you very much. Thank you, PI. Thank you, PO. Thank you to all the team as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Echafikaios. <clears throat> Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. What are we doing? We're taking our stand. We're taking our stand. We're taking our stand. If you, Even if you are here, please listen to the message again and again and again. And I just pray. Also, provide you, Staff Gaia, that this Amos nine thirteen, you would also receive, and you will come back testifying the name of Jesus. Not just that you just declare the words, but you also be a partaker of this Amen. mighty blessing. There will be a shift in your ministry, shift in your life, Amen. shift in your marriage for good in the name of Jesus. Declare open heavens over you, Staff Gaia, and we pray Amen. that the mighty God has opened the door for you, and that thing that you've been trusting God for, you will you will come back testifying how miraculous it it happened with ease with favor blessings upon blessings in the name of jesus we just pray over you as you have ministered so with with the, with the lord minister over you and would you see the hand of god in the name of jesus you are blessed on all sides you are favored in the name of jesus nothing broken nothing missing in the name of jesus as you declare so shall you see it in jesus amen. mighty name amen amen god bless you 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 everyone for joining um it's the same link to join other watches 9 12 3 6 9 p.m 12 midnight 3 a.m i'm back here at 6 a.m for another time of well 2024 god bless you and have a blessed day